what is this? This is a rotor attachment to the CNC. So we've had this for a little while now, um, enough time to really test it, cut a bunch of things, install it, all of that. So I thought, you know, now would be a good time to make a video about this. So this right here is a five by 10 Avid CNC machine. And what's really neat about these Avid machines is that they are configurable to grow with you. You can add more railing, you can make it longer, you can make it smaller depending on the space. And the same kind of general concept goes for the rotary attachment. But first of all, what is this? Some of you may ask. Well, it's kind of like a lathe for the CNC machine. You have the chuck, the tailstock, the cutting is done with the spindle. We have the linear rails, the main stepper motor, uh, the touch plate right here. It can rotate, however, it doesn't work on the same principle as a traditional lathe, where all the force comes from the wood spinning really fast, you know, at like 800 to 1500 RPM. In this situation, the chuck spins slowly depending on how you set it up, um, and then the router spins really, really fast at like 16,000 RPM, and the router also moves this way and up and down at the same time. So there's a lot of movement going in different directions. Another difference is that with a traditional lathe, uh, you can only really make symmetrical designs. I mean, you can't have one curve on one piece of the wood and a different curve on the other. Whereas with this, um, you can. You can create all sorts of carvings and designs, um, like a head, for example. Like you can also create perfectly round dowels. All the cutting is done downwards. Uh, you can't, for example, mount a ball blank on here and then expect to cut uh, horizontally. I mean, what you could do, of course, is mount a ball blank on the, the flat bed and then carve it in and then turn it around and carve it the other direction. So there are different ways to get around that, but I'm just illustrating what the difference is between this setup and uh, a traditional lathe. So if you currently have a CNC machine, adding something like this may have been something that you have been debating about, thinking about, especially if you want to be able to produce roundish shapes repetitively. I mean, having a rotary setup on a CNC machine is a pretty new possibility in the hobby market. I mean, this has been available in the industrial sector for a long time, but to be able to add this to your manufacturing garage studio is a pretty new thing. Although I do have to say, just because it is a machine that does the cutting, um, I don't think it necessarily always saves you a lot of time with the setting up the stock, setting up the machine, uh, changing the bits, running the programs back and forth. Um, it is, there's a certain amount of work involved. So it's not necessarily a quick thing. But um, if you're looking for repetitive results and the possibility of maybe hiring someone to do parts of this job, then I think um, it's probably the way to go. So I used Vectric by Aspire uh, to design the project and generate the toolpath. And then I used Mark IV to generate the G-code uh, to the machine. What's really great about this setup is that the programs are already uh, configured to accept the rotary. I mean, everything works. You just have to tell the program the location of the rotary um, and of course the, in the design files, etc. But it's a really nice feature that you don't have to learn a whole new software. Everything is ready to accept the motor, uh, so it's, it's very seamless. So that has been very nice. On this rotary, you can carve out really big pieces of wood. Um, you can carve out small pieces of wood. And I thought for today, uh, let's use this rather small piece and create something quite delicate. Uh, let's make a small wand. This is a scrap piece that I had, an off cut. Um, so let's go and design that and I'll show you guys the software. There's a bunch of settings you have to set up, like it's rotary, the tool paths are different. One of the biggest things to learn, how to design, it's a little different from when you are designing flat sheets. Okay, let's take this piece of paper. Okay, here is my piece of wood. Now imagine rolling it out. This is the part that you are designing now. So it's like a different way to think about it. So you kind of have to shift your mind around. Um, basically, we're first setting up our workpiece, like how big it is, and then we're designing um, underneath here. Um, and you're creating the half part of the project, a round thing, and it's gonna be the same on both sides. If you were to design an asymmetrical something, then you would design the other half separately. You create a different design for that part. So here we have our quick wand. Obviously, you could go much more detailed here if you wanted to. And now we set our tool paths. First, a rounding toolpath, then a roughing toolpath, and finally, a finishing toolpath. 
and then we can save this and import this file into Mach 4. So file is ready. Um, we're now at the step where we want to set it up on the machine, hone it. I want to this, tighten this. One thing that you want to be really careful with when you're setting up the machine is that you want to make sure that your X position where you're going to start cutting isn't going to be too close to this thing. This thing is just going to start cutting wherever it is. So, for example, if I were to move this too close to here, like this is going to come down um, and it, it would cut right in here. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you set your X position far enough to the right so you need enough waste on your wood um, so that it doesn't react with this thing. That's another reason why you can't have dust collection on here either because it's going to interact, which is why I have dust collection set up in, in this uh, rather uh, fabulous way. This works really well. I have a, a hose right here and I have this right here. It works great. Uh, but you can't have dust collection on this unit as it comes down. Um, the other thing is we're going to put in a bit now and the bit is not that long so that means it's going to come down quite far. Again you have to uh, make sure that you don't have any any chance of it interacting here. So this is the bit that we're going to use uh, to cut this today. The other thing you want to uh, make sure is that you don't have this sitting in your chuck. Uh, you don't want to forget that. That would be really, really bad. Now this is in position. We're going to um, tell the machine where we are using the home plate. It's in the middle and I'm going to put this on there. Okay, so the machine is all set up now. It knows where it is. So now we are all set. Uh, we're gonna turn the dust collection on and we're gonna start the machine up and run the program. Run the first program, which is going to be the rounding to turn it into a round shape. Now rounding in the first roughing stage only took a minute and a half, rather an aggressive cut actually. Next step now is to switch the bit. So this is a quarter inch square bit. I'm gonna go for a quarter inch round bit, like a bullnose bit. So this one will be able to make those kind of smoother shapes better. Now after uh, changing the bit, we need to set the height again. Remove this touch plate and make sure it is clean. You don't want any dust interfering. A little tiny bit can make a big difference. So every time you change the bit, you need to reset it to let the machine know the height. To, to shape this, it uh, only took a couple minutes, like six minutes, something like that, I would say. This right here is desert ironwood. It's kind of like petrified, looks like bark. It is heavy as a rock. The tricky thing about, you know, this is, first of all, it's gonna be really hard on the tools and it's not straight anywhere. There's no straight side. So I'd be really nervous, you know, running it on the, the table saw, any of the tools which is why I'm thinking it might be a good candidate for the CNC. So if I could chuck it up, perhaps I could round it. I don't know. I'm not even sure how much I'm gonna be able to get out of it. So that will cut in the middle. Now, see how this piece isn't uniform at all? Well, that means the spindle is going to cut in air quite a bit and we're taking it down slowly, reducing the diameter one cut at a time, so as not to be too aggressive. I um, don't see the bark coming off, such fine powder. So when you have weird wood like this, I think it's the perfect opportunity for the rotary. That way you don't dull the blades of your tools and I would be nervous turning this by hand. Like what if it cracked and shattered right at me or came off the chuck? Now, the reason why this feels more secure is because the wood is not spinning as fast. It's the spindle that's spinning fast, but the wood is more secure. Look at that, I think that looks so cool. So, like this chocolate dust is everywhere, all, all the way into over there. What is that, like 
12 feet, wait, maybe 14 feet. So it's still not completely round. There are some, some areas here that dip down, so we need to take another pass. I'm gonna go down another half inch, and you can see there's a hole right here, so I don't know how far in that's gonna go. I guess I should point out this setup here was before we moved the dust collection. So we have it on top here, which I don't recommend, and uh, you can't use the dust shoe either. It's much more effective and safer to have the dust hoses underneath and from the side. It literally feels like coffee grounds. There. So it's as round as it's going to get. Now I decided to cut a tool handle out of it, and this is the first tool handle we cut on here. And you can see as it's cutting just how cracked this is inside. Getting a little worried here, uh, but still getting the tool handle cut. It is beautiful, yet cracked. So, so adding some sawdust and epoxy here to attempt to strengthen it and prevent it from cracking any further. Um, let it set, then cut the path again, and that will work nicely. Um, then we figured perhaps you could cut another handle on the remaining material, might as well use it, and went through the process again, and it worked out really well. But look how cool it looks. I love this wood. Actually, this log was gifted to me from a guy at a hardwood dealership that I got to know. That was several years ago now, and it's been sitting on the shelf because I've been too afraid to touch it. <laughs> Until now, that is. So good job, Rotary. And here you can see how absolutely gorgeous um, these screwdrivers turned out. I wish I had more of this wood now. But it cut beautifully on the Rotary. Um, so no issue whatsoever. So operating the machine is definitely a pretty hands-on job because you need to uh, switch bits. We've learned through trial and error, um, if you choose a small bit for like rounding it and doing the roughing, it's gonna take forever, hours and hours. Um, so it's much more efficient time-wise to put on a larger bit, do the roughing and then change it. And it, you know, almost like the smaller job you have, the smaller bit you want, you can create really, really fine engravings, but you wanna like change to a smaller bit. I currently have the capacity here to cut three and a half foot long pieces, which is really plenty. I mean, most table legs are not longer than three feet. I have it set up in the front here, which is really nice because with this big setup, I can still fit a full sheet uh, of plywood here and cut while having this devoted to, uh, to this right here. But you can also mount this on the rails like in this direction if you wanted to be able to cut really long things um, or in, in whatever works for you. So there's a lot of like flexibility. In terms of setup, it wasn't difficult, but it was definitely a little finicky, I would say. When you set it up, you need these two sides uh, to be identical in height. If there is a tiny, tiny variation, that's going to get magnified and make a big problem later on. So installing it per se is pretty straightforward, but it's about getting all the details just right. Who is this for? Obviously this is really fun for the hobbyist. Uh, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. Um, but where I think um, this is a really good option is for a small business. Like for example, if you are creating a product and you want to have a standardized design and perhaps you even want to um, hire someone to perform certain parts, um, then this is really great. On the other hand, if you are really good on the lead, like if you love you know, do, you're doing the lathe, uh, you're really fast with it, it might not necessarily save you a lot of time. I mean, it would relieve you of, you know, parts of that constant job, uh, enable you and make it possible for you to source out certain parts, um, but it's not necessarily going to be faster. You know, I had somebody on Instagram write and ask like, well, what do you actually use the machine for? And it has become part of our workflow. Um, we recently developed a screwdriver product and we do cut the handle on here. Um, and actually I'm working on a whole video about that, about making the screwdrivers. Um, but it's not so much about making the screwdriver as it is about having an idea for a product and then going through the process of developing that and everything that kind of comes up. Um, so I'm working on that right now. That's gonna be out soon as well. But I think what I really love about having something like this in the shop is that I don't even really know what I'm going to be using it for until I need something that fits this, this job. 
Um, like it opens up new doors, it makes it possible to do certain things that you weren't able to do previously. But in reality, like what is it useful for? Uh, well, table legs, um, baseball bats, handles, uh, sculptures, weird asymmetrical things, um, dowels, like parts for other projects, I think is a really big part. That's always what I used to do the lathe for um, as well, is parts, like not necessarily like a whole project, but parts for other projects. Um, so I think that's where it's really great. Um, now, it, like having this doesn't necessarily mean that I never want to turn again. I actually really like turning and the kind of physical act of doing that. So I don't think that this necessarily removes the need for a lathe or if you'd like to do have a lathe. Um, it's really more in terms of a production or precision if you want to be able to do something very precise. I think that's about it for now. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below if there was anything I missed going over. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.